the, the question people ask is, was it a surprise? Did you know about it? Uh, I can honestly say that uh, I had no idea. Over the years, I doodled on my blotting pads, uh, out of producing shows, and there were phone numbers, there were Beatles phone numbers, and all sorts of actresses, you know. And uh, the, uh, the uh, director of the Whitworth Gallery in uh, Manchester, he, he saw these and he said, uh, they're works of art and uh, they should be on display of an exhibition. So the exhibition was organised and of course um, I was too close to it and uh, I said to my wife, v, look, you look, you take it over and uh, anyway, organise it, and which, which she did. So we had some funny phone calls but I, they, of course they were I assumed they were for this exhibition that she was organising, you know. So I had no idea. Um, I'd asked Bernard Manning and some of the comedians to come just to get a bit of publicity for the exhibition. And um, by two o'clock they hadn't turned up and they'd never ever let me down because the comedians was one of uh, my big series that I produced in, in the 70s and onwards. And they, no, they never let me down. I thought, this, this is not, not on, you know. I mean, I've made stars of these guys, you know, which they own up to. And uh, anyway, about just after two o'clock, five past two, door burst open and they, uh, uh, half a dozen or seven comics came running in. I was going to say, where, where have you been? You know, you're late. Um, and Michael Aspel was obviously with them, but there was the most peculiar feeling because it was a face that I recognised amongst the other six I recognised and but assumed he was one of the comedians at yeah. the back of my mind and I'm, I'm telling him off where have you been and he's nudging me in the same drag out this is your life you know and yeah it was a, a great moment loved it uh, they took me up to a room um, gave me a bottle of champagne no telephones and I thought what am I going to do? And it was half past two. And of course they didn't record the show till five o'clock. So there I am sitting there for three hours you know, in this room, can't um, talk to anybody. The first thing was don't touch the champagne. You know, because uh, well, you're going to go on, on air. Um, and I, I don't know whether I was assuming it was live or pre-recorded. Of course it was pre-recorded. Um, and really going through my mind was, uh, obviously, who's going to be on the show? And I was thinking, well, I hope it's no great superstar that I've worked with once, you know, and uh, it pretends, and this happens so often, I'm sure, on, on the series, you know, I hope it's no big superstar that's going to, going to say, Johnny, it's wonderful to see you, <laughs> well, you know. But as it turned out, everybody that was on the show was a, a very good mate. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the, the hotel, where the exhibition was, was right opposite Granada. In fact, I think Granada owned it, or partly owned it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's no problem. So they took me across to Granada. Of course, then I go into, uh, into, into makeup. Um, I know everybody there, all the girls there. And one of them said to me, she said, uh, oh, the, the Grumbleweeds are looking, oops. <laughs> that was, uh, you know, so I was actually just been working, finished. Uh, well, five or six series with the Grumbleweeds and uh, she let the cat out of the bag on and they're going to be there but, but uh, who else you know. Yeah. The, show, uh, the show was recorded in uh, Studio 6 at Granada where I would made programmes with Little Richard and Jerry Lee Lewis and uh, the Beatles and over the years you know many years so I was very familiar with the with the, the setting felt at home but I thought it, it's really great because I can just sit back and someone else can do the producing and the directing and uh, all that organising. I've just got to sit sit there and uh, see who comes on next. You know, it was uh, very. I mean, it was great really because um, V had been working for ages trying to dig up my old schoolmaster, old Hugh Morris. He was wonderful. I, 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 we lived on a council estate when I was a kid. I went to this uh, county modern secondary school or whatever it was called. And uh, but this Hugh Morris was a, a real inspiration. Uh, it, he was the big surprise, you know. I mean, and I hadn't seen Hugh for 45 years. Uh, but um, he was a wonderful guy. It was strange as it worked out because when you do a, a This Is Your Life, you get a lot of people that you haven't seen for years contact you. Well, maybe I had a 10, a dozen people. That, so Hugh Morris, of course, 
being a schoolmaster, he had hundreds of people contacting him. And he died a year later when he was 85. But that last year, he had hundreds of boys contacting him, old boys, you know, um, from all walks of life. Um, there was one who was an ambassador somewhere in some, some other country. Uh, and there was one I remember from Wormwood Scrubs. It was in Nick's. <laughs> Uh, the show, I think, runs for half an hour. They actually, on my night, they recorded uh, about 45, 50 minutes. Um, and there, there were some things that were cut. And it's a shame, really, because some of the edited stuff I thought was wonderful. I mean, Michael Astor got to, got to uh, tell me a story of who was the, the first famous person I ever met, and that was Frank Sinatra. And, uh, Obviously, V had told him this story, and um, I was assistant manager at the Granada Kingston, uh, Tooting, the flagship one, 3,600 uh, seats. And uh, Frank Sinatra was due to do, well, he was you know, my idol I got at that time. He was you know, super, super mega star for me. But he'd, I think he'd been having trouble with uh, Arthur Gardner, and he punched an Australian journalist in the face. and. Uh, this big theatre, enormous theatre, only 150 people turned up and um, I had to go and tell you the bad news and then I had to operate Frank Sinatra's sound. I was sitting up there, with, you know, I was 22, I thought, my God, you know, it's incredible. Anyway, on This Is Your Life, um, Mike Aspel said yes. Uh, he said, uh, um, we've uh, uh, been in touch with Mr Sinatra he said, and he holds you entirely responsible for the bad business that night. He said, so he's not going to appear on your show. And I thought, what a shame to have cut that out, you know. In half an hour, you can't really do a life, you know. I think my Parkinson said to me, he said, you're scratching, the, they just scratch the surface on your life, you know. But what can you do in half an hour? Not, not that much. And uh, there, yeah, there were things that um, they got wrong as well. They showed a photograph of my father as a clown with, said it was me <laughs> and my dad in uh, they said was a postman and showed a photograph of him in his uh, um, fire service during the war he was a patrol reader in the in the national fire service you know but that did you get that well apparently and uh, my wife told me this because I, I wasn't in the studio when they do a warm-up and of course you, for a, a poor warm-up man to work in front of uh, what six or seven of those comics you know were, were all sitting there waiting uh, for me to come on you know um, it must have been murder and uh, apparently it was mayhem and uh, uh, V said that Michael Aspel was getting very hot round the collar but of course minute the old curtain goes up they were professionals anything yeah. and uh, there was very little cut from that the actual sort of timing in my career well, yeah, it was good, I think, because I left Granada in 1987. So that was about five years after uh, um, I'd left Granada. I wasn't in a position then, as head of entertainment, to uh, uh, give any, anyone a job. <laughs> you know, so uh, it would be a horrible thought to think people came on your show because uh, they wanted, and, and sucked up a bit, you know, because they wanted work, you know. So, that, yeah, it was nice. Good timing, I think. Um, and watching it back now, it, it brings back to a lot of happy memories because there are a lot of people there that are not here with us anymore, you know, particularly people like Bernard Manning, you know, and uh, it, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and um, I played it to a few people the other day and um, they, who'd never seen it, you know, young people, and they, they thought it was great, particularly the comedian's part, you know. <laughs> Looking back um, at, at the show, I think that uh, they covered it pretty well. In fact, it was a comedy show, my one, when I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of laughs, and yeah. uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Got to have a laugh, you know.